This is Dario and I'm Tony and joining us today is Jean Sebastian from the International Trade Center. We are here to delve into Uzbekistan's WTO accession process and how the ITC is helping them through it. Jean Sebastian, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. First question, how has your experience in Uzbekistan been so far? It's been great actually. I've uh, been coming to Uzbekistan for the past four years. I've seen this, this country changing uh, quite impressively. Uh, every time I come, things have changed, um, and uh, you know it's uh, you see investment coming in, um, and um, yeah, it's always a pleasure to come here. Travel-wise, it's also getting easier. Uh, the way, when you get to the borders, things are getting smoother, better. So you see a lot of improvement happening, and that's you know it makes things easy, more seamless more seamless. Yes. Exactly. So in what ways is Uzbekistan's accession to the WTO going to facilitate its deeper integration into the global supply chains and global trade market? Okay, um, overall I would say that um, if we look at the private sector and if we look at uh, MSMEs as we call them, micro, small and medium enterprises, which are the most, uh, the provider of most jobs in many countries and probably it will happen here as well, uh, one thing that is critical for them are regulatory predictability, regulatory and institutional predictability. Uh, why? Because as opposed to multinationals, any regulatory changes, fragmentations, obstacles will increase their cost. And many times this cost cannot be bared by those MSMEs. While MNCs can play around, can absorb the cost stemming from those changes or from these fragmentations, so um, for MSMEs, what is critical about WTO accession and agreement is the predictability, regulatory and institutional predictability that it will provide. And at three levels. One, I would say, it provides predictable conditions to access market in trading partners. An example was Vietnam. Before Vietnam became a member of the WTO, they were subject to a limits in terms of increase of exports for textile and clothing product on an annual basis. They could only increase by 5% in the US. Once they have become a member, this limitation was scrapped. So just to say that you know, it will provide that kind of predictability. Second, it will provide some kind of predictability vis-a-vis -vis unilateral measures that may be imposed by countries that would affect the conditions uh, and measures based on geoeconomics, which, you know, it is a feature of the uh, overall uh, trading environment. And, um, you know, in the context where supply chains are being reshuffled, reshoring of value chain, investors will look into this predictability to assess where and whether they should invest in a particular country. So WTO provides this kind of predictability against any unilateral um, measures that may impact those conditions based on geoeconomic uh, reasons. Now the third, uh, I would say, level of predictability is at country level, uh, domestically. As you become a member of the WTO, yes, you are subject to a number of rules. You are locking in reforms uh, which will provide this predictability for MSMEs, for investors, for traders, but it, especially in a time where the country wants to diversify its economy. Diversification means, and especially diversify its economy in non-traditional sectors. That means quite a lot of new regulations, quite a lot of institutional arrangements. And WTO will provide that, and it will provide this guarantee, this predictability, not only by the time the country become a member of the WTO, but it will sustain this predictability over time. So I would say overall, these are, those are the benefit that will be provided in particular for MSMEs. Now, to answer directly your questions, how uh, you know, um, WTO action can, can also you know, contribute to the integration into these global value chains, very you know, uh, uh, clear examples are, as you join the WTO, you are subject to incorporate in your trading environment international standards. 
global value chain and even regional value chain are driven by those standards. If you don't go by that, we can talk about sanitary and phytosanitary standards, technical regulations. If you don't go by those standards, very difficult for you to anchor and to become one segment of this value chain. So WTO enables you to do that. Another uh, uh, way to leverage WTO to get this predictability and to anchor MSMEs into those value chains are trade facilitation. There is an agreement of the WTO, which is called the Trade Facilitation Agreement, that provides measures which need to be implemented at country level, which facilitate, again, from a customs perspective, the connections with uh, these uh, this, uh, value chains. And there are numbers of other instruments, which are related to the that we can mention, you know, which will enable countries like Uzbekistan to connect with the regional and global value chain services. If you make commitments at the WTO and you um, open up some of these sectors and you maybe get rid of some restrictions, you enable your service providers to be more effective. There would be more a better quality of services provided. Because of the competition? Because of the competition. And then if you get better transportation services, uh, telecommunications, financial services, all these services are called infrastructure services and they're also called the glue of the global value chain because you are able to connect better if those services are efficient. So in short, those are the benefits that you could get uh, from, uh, um, from the WTO accession. And all of what you just mentioned, most was recently announced in the presidential decree that was signed into effect on the 4th of this month. The presidential decree is touching on some of these elements. Um, it's uh, um, uh, giving directions which needs to be followed up by proper reforms. Yes. But this is in the, the intentions of the government, I understand, is to become a member by 2026. Mm -hmm. Very ambitious, but possible if those reforms are actually taking place on, on the ground. Yes, just like riding a bike, you cannot stop pedaling, you have to keep going yes. forward. Yes. How is the International Trade Center assisting Uzbekistan in its accession process? And what initiatives are being taken to help facilitate the accession into the WTO? Well, ITC has been uh, active actually in, uh, in Uzbekistan for the past four years through a European Union funded project, which, whose aim is to support the accession of Uzbekistan to the WTO, World Trade Organization. How we are doing Uzbek how we are helping Uzbekistan in this accession process, it's been four years now that we've been working very closely with the chief negotiator of this country and his team uh, uh, quite actively in, uh, I would say, four different fronts. The first one is to help them in negotiating those, uh, uh, um, uh, I mean, going through the negotiation process. It's a very complex, uh, uh, multi-track process. You have to engage on multi-tracks, bilateral tracks. You have to also conduct a number of domestic reform. So it's very complex, very deep exercise. So we've been working with them very closely to be able to negotiate, understand, to inform the negotiation. The government makes their own decision. We provide technical input. Uh, we inform the decision and then negotiate. That's the first thing. The second thing is that we also need to help them in the numbers of documentation that you need to prepare uh, in order to, first of all, inform the members of the WTO about your economic environment. So it's a transparency exercise uh, and there are numbers of other documents that need to be prepared in that process and then it leads to the uh, commitments that the country has to take or the concession that the country has to make in order to become a member. So we are supporting them on that second track as well. Again, providing technical inputs, up to them to decide as to how they want to project it. Um, a third component, which is critical, uh, is about domestic reform. So again, we are helping the government, the ministries, the government agencies to understand how their laws, regulations differ from the WTO requirements. There are numbers of WTO agreements. You need to you know, comply with those agreements. So we help them in understanding you know, the gap when there are gaps. But we also try to help them to understand how to comply with these requirements while also supporting their own domestic legitimate uh, economic strategy so, um, or objectives. So we provide input for that. And 
we have touched on different laws on intellectual property. We have looked at uh, um, SPS, sanitary and phytosanitary uh, uh, legal framework, very complex. Um, the TBT, technical barriers to trade, okay, uh, regulatory environment as well, another very complex area. Uh, we are currently looking at trade remedies. So yes, again, informing the policymakers, the lawmakers on those aspects and so that they are better equipped to make their own decisions. And of course, in that process, there's a lot of capacity building, a lot of training. And finally, we are also sensitizing the private sector, mm -hmm. MSMEs, on the implications that this process will have for them so that they are prepared to size the opportunities, to adjust. Um, so yeah, those would be the four kind of era of intervention that we are implementing. And we've been doing that for four years. Um, and uh, yeah, we are committed to support further if need be. And how have there been any challenges or big setbacks throughout the process? Or has it been quite smooth throughout? What is very striking, which we don't see in other countries that we are currently supporting on accession to the WTO, is the political will. There is a very strong political will here uh, to, to make this happen, um, which is not a given. Uh, and that is, uh, uh, I would say, one of the critical uh, uh, keys for success in the process. If you don't get this political will, if you, you will not be able to get the input from you know, a, a vast group of ministries. You will not be able to uh, ensure that uh, there is an alignment that cuts across all these different sectors. So I think somehow Uzbekistan has this big um, advantage of having this political support, uh, which is, again is not taken uh, for granted. Um, and we, which lately we see, you know, quite a lot of progress on all the fronts, on the tracks of negotiation that as I have referred to, whether it is the multilateral, the bilateral, um, or whether it is also on the regulatory reform process. Um, Uzbekistan, and as an illustration of that, uh, or something that epitomizes this progress, over the last uh, 14 months, Uzbekistan was able to get or to hold four working party meetings, which are very important milestones because those are meetings between Uzbekistan and all the WTO members who recognize the work, the progress that the country has made in this accession and who are willing to, con who are willing to get together in order to, you know, take stock and further make progress. So, you know, there are challenges because it is complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, it is technically complicated. The negotiation process is complicated. Uh, there's different tracks uh, because it requires the mobilization of different stakeholders, many stakeholders in the country who need to understand what is the objective. And we know that, you know, uh, sometimes as any organization between elements, it's not always, you, you know, perfect. Um, so, and the technicalities of the WTO can be very, very complex. So this is why organizations like us and others provide technical assistance to equip the country, to inform them, so that they can make you know, their own decision. Thank you. My pleasure. I really appreciate your insights and I'm sure our audience would as well. Uzbekistan has been on this journey since 1994. And as we can see, to be able to reach the goal of being a full member of the WTO by 2026, a lot has to be done. But Uzbekistan is well on its way there.